Hello, welcome to the Clarion Energy TV studio and we're here in Kuala Lumpur today to discuss the optimum energy mix to affect the energy transition. And I'm joined by Narsing Chowdhury of Black & Veatch. Narsing, thanks Thank you so much for having me here. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. You're very welcome. So we're discussing the optimum energy mix. In theory, what is that? What does it comprise? So, I mean, if you look in the past, uh, the old school was if you need certain uh, megawatt of uh, capacity to be put in a particular country or location, you go with few hundred megawatts uh, and you had certain standard sizes we could just go and implement. So the way the regulations are coming on uh, fossil fuel, you find on coal the, uh, the bankability is becoming questionable, the banks are not willing to finance, and you find the renewables, which was a main hindrance for renewables in the past, was the high prices. That has started coming down. Uh, solar has more or less come to the same level as gas-based power plants, still slightly higher. So we see a huge shift in, uh, in some of the market that solar has started surpassing conventional generation. Now the disadvantage that is there with conventional generation with solar or coal is the unpredictability which is there uh, with respect to the wind condition or, or the uh, availability of sun. Now this can be compensated by battery energy storage. So a combination of renewables with battery energy storage is providing the same kind of energy mix that you get with respect to conventional generation. So when we, when we look at customers, I think Customers have this choice now of making a good balance between having renewables plus conventional generation as the base load. And when you're looking to make that balance, obviously you look at the, the assets that are available at the moment, but would you also be looking ahead to the uh, assets that might come online in the future because of the you know, developing technology trends that are happening so fast? You know, you'd be planning perhaps some years ahead to, to affect an optimum energy mix to come into effect maybe a few years down the line. Yes, it is being done. So if you look at uh, in the past when the coal-based plants were put, a lot of countries are slowly phasing those out with gas being their base, base load. But there's still some countries who find that coal, considering the cost of energy is much lower, depending on uh, how, how their consumers are, you're still going ahead with uh, coal. For instance, in Vietnam, you still find coal. In uh, uh, Indonesia, you still find coal. But there are a lot of other countries, like Thailand has given up more or less on coal. So uh, looking in the long term, countries are aware that when they are going for coal, whether they, they should go in, in, in the long term or they should move to gas, or at some point of time, they've started looking at their overall strategy of announcing at least 20, 25% coming from renewables. For instance, Malaysia. They made a government announcement that they would like to have 20, 25% coming from renewables. And this trend is being seen in a lot of other countries in this region, including Philippines, Vietnam, and uh, Indonesia as well. Okay, and uh, so those countries are already on that path. Are there some that aren't there yet, but you can see the potential is there for them to, to, to follow that journey as well? India is a good example. Uh, if you look at India, they, they have close to 375 gigawatt of generation. They are looking at and 375 gigawatt, 70% coming from coal. And they are looking at uh, increasing in the next three years another 50 gigawatt of solar base. They have a huge wind-based generation already. So some of these countries, I mean, the, the con challenge behind these countries is to first, first meet the power need which is there and then slowly ramp up on the renewables. Uh, renewable is, uh, I won't say the first choice still in many of these countries is conventional because it's, it's much more reliable in terms of bankability and everything else. But we are seeing more and more countries uh, starting to get government support and financial support with green finance and all those things for renewables. And aside from the areas that are already your core focus, what markets are you looking at? Primarily for us, uh, in, in Asia-Pacific, there are three big markets. You have China on one side, India on the other side, and in between you have Southeast Asia, which is a dynamic mix of uh, 10 different countries, each having is their own power demand and power requirement. So Southeast Asia for us is the most attractive at the moment. And within Southeast Asia, I would call Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines, and Thailand as our key markets. Nothing. that's fascinating. Thank you very much for your time today. That's all for now. Don't forget to tune into our YouTube channel to get more great content on the energy transition.